And welcome again to the big match, where today we're concerned with the last nail-biting issues of promotion and relegation. Yet still we have the relegation issue at the bottom of the first division clouded with doubt, as we'll show you today as we bring you Arsenal against Spurs and Luton Town against Manchester City. And as a contrast, the clear-cut issue at the top of Division 2 that gives the final promotion place to Norwich City. We'll show you just how they did it at Portsmouth. There's the final of our Golden Goals competition, and you can hear how our judges from the left, Bernard Joy of the Evening Standard, Alan Ball, Malcolm Allison, and Victor Railton of the Evening News reach their verdict on the order of merit. And of course, you can meet the winner of our Golden Goals and the, winner, the winning viewer as well. So we really have a lot to get through today, and we're going to make a start at Highbury, where, by a quirk of the Football League fixture computer, Arsenal were given the chance to say whether or not their great North London rivals, Tottenham, remained a First Division club. A win for Spurs would mean safety. Any other result would put them at the mercy of other sides in similar trouble. So Arsenal hold much of the future of Spurs in their hands. And Spurs, with a good run behind them in recent weeks, arrive for another of those pressure-filled matches, a look of concern and anxiety on most of their faces, though this is something they've learned to live with over the past few worrying months. Now let's pick up the two teams for this vital game. And we find, first of all, that changes are forced upon Arsenal. Goalkeeper Jimmy Rimmer is out, he broke a finger in training, and Jeff Barnett gets his first game for more than two seasons. Eddie Kelly also missing, but George Armstrong makes a return in the number 11 shirt. As for Spurs, they are unchanged with John Pratt, now named as the substitute. A lot, of course, could rest on the goalkeepers today. For example, will Jeff Barnett get into the tempo of First Division football after a long absence, now that Jimmy Rimmer is reduced to signing autographs with that heavily strapped left hand? And above all, will Pat Jennings in the Spurs goal continue to amaze us all with the breathtaking quality of his work under pressure? Terry Neal, the Spurs manager, former Arsenal player, of course, and in the midst of all that pressure, time still for a smile. The referee is Ray Tosden from Kettering, and the noisy crowd of 43,000 now waits for the start. So Arsenal kick off, attacking the goal to our right. In the red shirts and white sleeves, Spurs in white. And Spurs looking for a victory that would mean survival in the first division. That's how crucial this season has become for them. A month ago they looked to be dead and out of it. A tremendous recovery with uh, four wins out of their last five games has meant that in the remaining two games they need two points. Jeff Barnett in goal for Jimmy Rimmer who broke the little finger of his left hand in training yesterday. and it was given as obstruction there against uh, Terry Mancini. Referee Ray Tosland, in spite of the uh, appeals of Terry Mancini, having no doubts, and I honestly feel there were no doubts, but Arsenal, as you can see, with everybody back now, there is not one player nearer the Spurs goal than the ball wearing a red and white shirt at the moment. All 11 back. Four in that wall there, Cyril Knowles and Alfie Conn. I wonder if Conn will try a, a dipper and a curler. No, Knowles playing it through. Perryman playing it on. And Arsenal getting it away. Osgood dinking it again. Rice to ball. The short one to Story. Kid. Ball. And now Hornsby. Knowles, offside against Duncan. Taking it too far forward, I think he'll have to go back two or three yards. with the free kick for Arsenal. Armstrong tried to get there first, but Perryman was after him. Brady now to Nelson. Played on towards Hornsby. Shadowed by Beal. Nelson again. Hornsby trying to dummy his way past Beal, and he didn't succeed. Simpson picking up the loose one. 
Nelson making a good run, which Spurs didn't really spot. And there's Nelson with an interesting cross there towards Alan Ball, turned down towards Kidd. Oh, the catch him across the line. No, said the linesman. No, said the referee. Yes, said Brian Kidd. And Spurs come through on screen. Now, did that ball cross the line? Now, Duncan. Neighbour running into trouble there in the combination of Ball and Nelson. Again, Perriman in there. Fiercely competitive little man and doing very well indeed for Tottenham. And now Osgood to Knowles. Perriman making himself available again, but Osgood preferring to play it forward and only finding story. Kid for ball. First time for Brady. Osgood in first again, but only as far as Rice. And Perriman got that one away. Duncan reacted quicker than Mancini. Simpson just outside that area I wouldn't have thought Terry Neal our former Arsenal player though he is would have been too happy about that wanting to push a few more men forward so can Spurs still do something with it Knowles and corner the men placed behind it five men in the Arsenal wall Knowles lifting it to the far side Mancini getting it away Rice got it away. Good run by Duncan. I think he took quite a tumble there, but he's quite okay now. Good backward header by Jones. Mancini had trouble getting that one away, and Perryman was in first. Well, apart from that one very fortunate escape for Tottenham, it's Spurs who've made all the running, inspired in the middle of the field by their skipper Steve Perryman. There must have been an infringement there, just uh, outside the six-yard area, which gives Arsenal the free kick, and Barnett will take it. And the Spurs fans away at the clock end are beginning to make themselves heard. Knowles kept it in. Conn kept it going. Rice with the header. Now ball. And with the Spurs supporters chanting at one end, the reply is coming swiftly from the North Bank, where the most of the Arsenal fans are. Ranked at this moment, ball to Brady. Chipped in once more, Osgood in trouble, Kidd! And he's got it in there! And Kidd has scored! Well, that's a terrible foul for Tottenham. As the ball came in there, perhaps not quite positive enough and Kidd was able to sneak in and tuck it under the body of Pat Jennings Arsenal 1 Spurs 0 number 23 for Brian Kidd Simpson with a header Kinnear in quickly and a free kick to Tottenham so well, they'd had one fright, but they seem to be getting over that Tottenham, and here's Perryman, they've got a lot to do now, Osgood caught offside,
Carroll. Chris Jones now for Tottenham. Stopped by Simpson. Naylor with the throw for Tottenham. Quite a long one. Jones winning a fair number of useful balls in the air. Now knows, but he let fly from there. Deflected uh, away by Mancini. Tottenham's throw. Though the linesman is indicating a free kick. And I think it'll come back for a free kick. Played in towards Duncan. Oh, Barnett had it and lost it and could No, he couldn't quite get it over the line. It was kicked away right at the end by Sammy Nelson. Well, as soon as Jeff Barnett lost that one, Arsenal could have been in trouble. Con just got a foot to it. And Nelson just kicked it away. So a corner for Tottenham. Jimmy Neighbour taking it. And Barnett gathering that one. to get the tempo of first team football again for Brady. Hornsby. Ball supporting him, so too is Rice. To Story. Swinging a deep cross in again towards Armstrong, and Armstrong is there, and a good save again by Jennings. Mancini. The header might do, at least it might come for Duncan. Jones battling for it as well, Conn is up here. Duncan to Conn. And in the nick of time, Liam Brady was back. Conn was really snaking through there. A beautifully timed challenge there by Liam Brady. On the Spurs forward. Conn with the corner for Tottenham. Chipped in again towards the near post, once again towards Perryman. But no, pushed away there, right at the end by Barnett. Barnett did remarkably well there. Looked as though that was going in all the way, and then Barnett just got uh, a fingertip to it. Good jump again by Osgood. Now caught. second of the first half and referee Ray Tosin looking at a couple of his watches Brady turning it back to Barnett free kick I think given there to Arsenal for the foul by Perryman and there goes the half time whistle with Arsenal leading by a golden hill the goal scored by Brian Kidd which is a bad blow for Tottenham, who've uh, played a lot of good football in this first half and have had probably a little more of the game than Arsenal have had. But we have to wait for the second half to see whether they get the goals that they so desperately need to survive in the first division. A lot to come on the big match today, including the final of our Golden Goals competition. And the half-time score here at Highbury, Arsenal 1, Spurs 0. We'll be right back with the second half.
So welcome back to Highbury. Spurs now attacking the goal to our right and badly in need of a goal to ease their relegation worries. In fact, it's Arsenal's form that's been wavering over the last few weeks. They've taken only one point from their last three games. They lost at Newcastle in midweek. In fact, of the uh, seven London derbies that Arsenal have played this season, they've won only one of them. it would be a wicked twist of the Football League's computer to put these two famous rivals together with so much meaning on it particularly one week after Spurs had uh, taken two valuable points off Chelsea now can Spurs do it here not that way as Rice is able to turn it back to Jeff Barnett Oscar in first. Kinnear not given enough room. And now Kinn with everything ahead of him. Jennings coming out fast. Oh, and a good save by Jennings. Great uh, run there by Kidd. Onside, of course. And if he could have chipped that just a little higher, Jennings would have had no chance. As it was, Spurs are still in the game. Here's Jimmy Neighbour. That was obstruction, yes. Tony, I think that Neighbour was clapping into the back of him. It's a free kick to Tottenham. Just about half an hour to go now. Perryman will take it. Duncan right in there and Duncan had it knocked off the top of his head by Mancini it's with Brian Kidd for Arsenal Hornsby Story really fighting for every ball Tottenham and Con trying all his tricks and getting through a lot of them and being pulled back bodily by Rice <laughs> he's becoming quite a character at Tottenham is uh, Alfie Korn Knowles with the free kick Story whacking that one away Kinnear is here under pressure from Kidd and a free kick again to Tottenham a chance once again for Kinnear to lift it towards Chris Jones and John Duncan and Osgood has come up as well well it wasn't a good one can't it straight at Allen Ball to Kidd the ball again Knowles Beal is offside both Perryman and Neighbour chant again of relegation on their finger at the Tottenham fans well, there's a lot of spirit left in Tottenham yet but it's Mancini on the ball for Arsenal to Alan Ball 
Armstrong. Brady. That'll fall for Rice. And now into the path of Hornsby. Oh. Just over. Again, if Arsenal get one more goal, then Tottenham, I think, have had it. And they very nearly got it there. The break by Hornsby. And as Jennings came out, he lifted it just a fraction too high. Kidd being watched by Osgood. Nelson, a good run there by the fullback. Position there between Neighbour and Kidd as well. Ball on the far side. Dinking it back again there for Peter Story. Oh, oh he hit the post! Oh. Well, Arsenal are not having any of the luck. And Spurs are taking all of it at the moment. As Ball dig that one back. Peter Story hit it first time against the Tottenham post. Here's Perryman. Kinnear. Gone past ball. Waiting again towards Chris Jones. Duncan's right in there. Terry Naylor's right in there. He tried to guide a header into the top corner where he saw a bit of space. But his aim was wrong. Planning it forward again, Mancini letting it go for Simpson. And now John Pratt is coming on. Terry Neal up there. Nobody quite knows who's coming off. I think it's Jimmy Neighbour probably going off. Yes, it's Jimmy Neighbour going off. Neighbour was giving a bit of width to the Spurs play. What Pratt will do is give a bit of aggression and a bit of fire from the middle of the field coming forward. But he's really only got 11 minutes to make his presence felt. Now here's John Pratt with his first touch of the ball, the long kick forward straight at Simpson. Really a meat and drink for him of those. Kid. Play for Story. Pratt battling but losing to Story, and here's uh, Sammy Nelson. Brady. Good play by Brady. Story again hitting one, and Terry Naylor getting his head in the way. Kept in by Con. I'm really running out for Tottenham now. A high hopeful kick there by Pat Jennings, hoping that the bounce of the ball will go for Tottenham, but it didn't. The story gets in again for Arsenal. Here's Hornsby. Ball in again now to Hornsby. A little chip past the post. looking at his watch again back playing it forward for Chris Jones and Jones not finding his man finding Armstrong instead a throw to Arsenal again the referee looks at his watch and it could well be that Spurs have got it all to do on Monday night against Tottenham Brady to ball in a lot of space on the far side against uh, Leeds at White Hart Lane Hornsby right through there, and Jennings out again, and it's still not away yet. Can Hornsby get past Spurs goalkeeper? He can, and it's headed off the line that time by Osgood. Here's Brady, quite a finale, and this time it's into the arms of Jennings. There goes the final whistle. Arsenal are pleased with their victory, and Spurs.
Spurs have to worry for a little longer to know whether they will come here for the league next season. The only goal of the game scored by Brian Kidd in the first half. Spurs not finding the ball running for them very much in the Arsenal penalty area, but having certainly their moments of luck too in their own penalty area. So we wait and we wonder about the other results and about Spurs against Leeds in this midweek. A final scoreline in Highbury today then that reads Arsenal 1, Spurs 0. So everything now hinges on Spurs getting a point from their home game against European Cup finalist Leeds United at White Hart Lane tomorrow night. If they do so, they're safe. But what about yesterday's game? In truth, it didn't really reflect a great deal of credit to either side, I think. A lot of effort by both sides. But there are one or two points that are worth examining. First of all, the Arsenal goal that uh, finally sank Spurs. And from the camera behind the goal, we can see, in fact, that young Keith Osgood, who otherwise had a terrific game, just got that touch in there, really wasn't quite positive enough, didn't get it away, didn't get it back to Jennings, allowing Brian Kidd to get in there and score that vital goal. Although, of course, the Arsenal fans and a lot of the Arsenal players will say that they had a perfectly good goal, not allowed, a few minutes earlier. Some good work here by Sammy Nelson. And as the ball comes across, we wonder, did the ball cross the line or didn't it? That was the incident in dispute. As ball knocks it back, Kidd hits it well. There's a deflection there that takes it wide of Jennings. Remember, the whole of the ball must be over the line. Cyril Knowles comes in there, stops it going across the line. As you can see, a perfectly good decision by the referee and by the linesman. That was not a goal. But if only Spurs had scored with their one real open chance early in the second half, they would still be a first division side for sure now. The Alfie Con miss, a good ball there by Terry Naylor, Perryman scuttling through there. Barnett comes out, but having spread himself, doesn't know where it is. Con comes in, stretches, in fact, a little more difficult than I thought it was yesterday, as he has to stretch out there. But look how agonizingly close that was to being the goal that Spurs so desperately wanted. And look at the scene in the center of the field as we come to it now. Terry Naylor there, prostrate in the field. Duncan with his head in his hands, Perryman and Con both lying flat on the ground as well. So near and yet so far for Tottenham. So for Londoners, with Chelsea sadly already in the second division, tomorrow's game for Spurs uh, against Leeds has an enormous significance. But a side, of course, that's already ensured itself one of those promotion places to Division 1 is Norwich City. They got their place when Sunderland lost at Villa yesterday, while Norwich were winning handsomely at Portsmouth. Southern Television covered that game at Fratton Park. The commentators, Martin Tyler, Portsmouth against Norwich, with Portsmouth the stripe on their shirts. Morris with the free kick. The header from Forbes. Now Sullivan. McDougall in for Boyer, but handed well. Now Maguire coming in, and what a good goal! And there's the scorer, Mick Maguire being congratulated by Ted McDougall. As the ball came in, hand headed it out, but Mc Maguire read the situation perfectly, and a beautiful header following up, and Figgins on his line, really no chance. Referee Bert Newsom has spotted an infringement on Marinello and brought play back. So the chance is still with Portsmouth. With five minutes to go to half time and Portsmouth trailing to that Mick Maguire goal. A lot of yellow shirts in the wall. And Andy Stewart is in there as well. Five for Kelly. Oh my word! How unlucky can you get? Norman Piper's curling free kick. Keelan nowhere and off the post back into play. Suggett. Boyer. Back for Suggett. The first time cross. McDougall and Martin Peters has made a good run. There's Peters header. And that is vintage Martin Peters. That is what. The former England international is all about timing his run to perfection. The first time cross from Suggett. A really beautiful cross to the far post. But there was Martin Peters, head and shoulders above the defence. The header on target. 2-0 to Norwich. And surely now they're going to be a first division side next season. 
surely they're going to bounce back at the first attempt and surely that means that John Bond will be a winner having come second so often as a manager look at those fans who've come down from Norwich the green and yellow scars very much in evidence Carhill Stewart Brown Butler and down he goes and into the book goes Jeff Butler for that late tackle Butler who really hasn't committed too many bad fouls and surely that was just a late tackle but in the eyes of referee Bert Newsom, it was one tackle too many there it is at the top of the bank there one or two of the Norwich fans perhaps celebrating a little bit prematurely and uh, one or two policemen's helmets in evidence that really would spoil the celebrations any arrest behind that goal Forbes Boyer now suck it but Piper sticking with him in at Graham Graham again feeling the effects of that big challenge by Duncan Forbes and a good tackle by McDougall and now it's two against one released beautifully by Suggett now Phil Boyer Phil Boyer against Phil Figgins there's the shot there's the third goal as Boyer salutes the fans behind the goal Portsmouth committed themselves Suggett beautifully timing his pass and Boyer the perfect finish. Portsmouth nil, Norwich City three. So Norwich bounced straight back into Division One as we welcome our viewers from Southern Television. Now on the programme, our Cup Final countdown. <laughs> It was just a week to go now to that cup final at Wembley between Fulham and West Ham. And Peter White of Romford sent me uh, this picture of the West Ham side of 1964 when they last won the cup. I wonder how many of those you can recognise. Standing top left, Ken Brown now at Norwich. Next to him, the Norwich manager now, John Bond. Jim Standen, the goalkeeper. Jackie Burkett, Eddie Bovington. Bobby Moore there standing on the right. And down on the uh, bench there from the left, Peter Braybrook, Ronnie Boyce, Johnny Byrne, Jeff Hurst and John Sissons. But, of course, the biggest scramble over the past few weeks has been for a ticket for the game. And uh, I know all of us on the big match team will apologise for not being able to help the scores of people who've written to us for tickets. We simply don't have them. And the problem, of course, is multiplied a thousand times over for the competing clubs. They each get a quota of 25,000 that I suppose they could sell three times over, as our film camera discovered when they went to Fulham this week. First of all, the note uh, outside the ground at Craven Cottage a very clear message there for the West Ham goalkeeper Mervyn Day. Mervyn, your day is up. But they've got a novel way of sorting out their uh, ticket inquiries there. There are some of the tickets that the Fulham fans, I'm sure, would love to get their hands on. The different sorts of requests that Fulham have had. And this is the way they deal with them. Those that said, I've been a supporter of Fulham for yonks. I don't expect you to remember me, but I've lost all my programmes. Your story it touches my heart but you still don't get a ticket, try West Ham, a sense of humour there at Craven Cottage. Still, if you are one of the disappointed ones, remember you can see the whole final live on ITV next Saturday. We're going to open up at 11 o'clock, and I should just tell you our special guests next week include Kevin Keegan, two goals in last year's final, of course, five goal Malcolm McDonald of England, the England skipper Alan Ball. We've got a camera on the Fulham coach as it makes its way to the stadium next Saturday. That should be worth seeing. Freddie Starr is going to provide a bit of comedy for us, and we promise you outstanding coverage of the match itself. Remember, we start on ITV 11 o'clock next Saturday. But now it's time for more action, and it's another of those fierce relegation matches in the First Division. It's Luton Town against Manchester City at Kenilworth Road, a match Luton badly needed to win. Anglia TV cover the game. The commentator is Jerry Harrison. Luton are in the dark shorts. Adrian Alston loping in towards the far post, and John Fortner will get this. It's a good return. And well headed by Peter Anderson. Well, it looked as if that cross had gone much too far, but Faulkner did so well to get it back. And Peter Anderson getting a good header in.
So John Aston to take the corner. Alston and Faulkner on the goal line. Alan West has come for the short one. Not required. Corrigan punch straight to West. Good shot. Brilliant effort. First time volley. Corrigan, the big goalkeeper, coming out for the punch, but getting it down as opposed to up. And West inches off target. And Willie Donachy, the Scottish international fullback here. Daniels, Jimmy Ryan, and Stewart might get this one. Across comes Buckley, beating him. Stewart, good goal. Well, that's a cruel blow to Luton and Keith Barber. But it was a fine goal by Stewart, cashing in on the half pass back by Jimmy Ryan. On he ran, across came Buckley, beat him well. Beautifully controlled shot, Barber with no chance. So 1 0 with only 13 and a half minutes gone. And a big mountain now for Luton to climb. Booth. Faulkner to Buckley. And that's a Manchester City throw. And Marsh has got away from Faulkner. Daniels coming to this one. Miscue. Daniels again. Well, Daniels really should have had the first one. And Barber didn't know anything about the second one. But it's still Manchester City. Although Ryan rescued the situation there. Well, Daniels had a tremendous chance there from Marsh's cross. Complete miscue. The second attempt, Barber never saw it. Aston with Tommy Booth and he's passed him well although the long legs of Booth rescuing the situation and it's a point second and a half Faulkner's right over the far side West can't get it Daniels it's gone out. Throw to Luton. We've got 19 minutes left. John Aston with Buckley. Long one to chase. It's on his left foot though. Hammond gets a foot to it. So another corner for Luton. over the far side out comes Corrigan dropping for Jimmy Ryan it's a good one Jimmy Ryan must have got it Andy King might have got a touch but Ryan did so well the driven corner Corrigan coming to it six foot four and a half but failed to get it Jimmy Ryan a really controlled pass in a Terribly tight situation, and did it go in direct from his kick, or did Andy King get a touch? But nevertheless, it's 1-1, but it's Buckley coming away, a man with no pedigree but a lot of skill. Brilliant run, and you can see there the change that that goal has brought in the Luton side. Tremendous confidence he had, he, all the determination in the world, but not quite the finish. So, a draw means that Luton also have to wait now on that Spurs-Leeds game tomorrow night. And if Spurs lose, then Luton will stay up. What a finish. But now on the programme, it's time for our Golden Goals competition of 1975. And this week, our judges have been deliberating. That You've seen the six goals over the last couple of weeks. They've been putting them in an order of merit. Bernard Joy of the Evening Standard, uh, Alan Ball of Arsenal and England, Malcolm Allison, the manager of Crystal Palace, and Vic Railton of the London Evening News. Let's eavesdrop for a moment. Alan, what about the quality of goals this year? Yeah, well, I, th I thought they were great goals. I mean, there's everything there for whatever you, you like in goals. There's individual brilliant, 
there's volleys, good strikes at goal, and there's a, a couple of team goals, you know, team efforts and works. And there's a couple of good runs too by the uh, individual players which yeah, need to go. Yeah, great Terry goals, Yorath yeah. and Tony Field. Yeah, they have great time and great time on the Robsons for the header, but I felt that um, the two volleys were tremendous goals, both dippers, you yeah, know, great both strikes, yeah. everybody likes to score goals like them. Oh, no, I was, well, I thought it was very, very nice to see the FA Cup finalist Fulham goal from John Mitchell and his volley. He really did well. You like that, that one, don't you? I think, he, I think he was quite pleased the way that worked <laughs> out. And a nice aspect of that is you've got the two old stalwarts, uh, Bobby Moore and Alan Muller, involved in the, in the build Yeah, they both knocked it about, yeah. 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 I'm surprised that, that being in the game, as you fellows are, that you haven't sort of mentioned in detail the Terry Yorath goal, which was a great deal of teamwork and a lot of expertise in that one. Yeah, it was a, it was a good goal team-wise. It probably gave the, you know, a lot of satisfaction, not only to Yorath, but to, the, you know, the, to Billy Bremner. And I thought the flick-up early on was great skill. But, but, but as an ex-defender, Malcolm, wouldn't you have thought that it was rather a bad error that allowed... Well, you see, he was put under pressure by Clark. You know, the flick over the tops are very, very difficult for defenders. He definitely got caught him on the wrong foot. And... Uh, I felt it was a great goal, actually, but uh, the actual finish, I felt that Shilton could have done better. And You've Bernard, got defensive I know errors too, I thought, in the uh, Tony Field goal. But then they were made by two very good players. Kevin Beatty dived into his tackle first of all, and then in the last knockings it was uh, Alan Hunter who, yeah. who dived in and missed the tackle. He surrendered, didn't he? But it was a great... <laughs> he he took it with, you've got to give Field the credit for having taken advantage of these errors. Well, he beat four fellows, you know, it wasn't a bad goal, was it? And <laughs> when he got there, he was no doubt what he was going to do. He was going to stick it in the back yeah. of the net. But he's yeah. hit it in at an angle, you know, the angle he's hit, you know, but like the keeper as well. Mm. He's, you know, it's a centre soccer centre to knock him in at that angle. That mm. Colin Powell goal against your... Don't, don't let's mention that. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's a pity he came into football so late, but yeah. did you think that it was a worthy goal against your... Oh, it was a great goal, actually. Is that the truth, Mark? The truth, is, the truth is, though, I said, that, I said to Jim Cannon and Derek Jeffers, playing on that side of the pot, I said, make this fellow go down the right-hand side all the time. Let him come inside he wants to come inside. No danger. So they let him come inside, it goes in the top corner of the net, you know. That's I can right. imagine what they said in the bath afterwards yeah. about me. I got for some judge, eh? <laughs> Only one-headed goal, Keith Robson's. Yeah, I think that... Um, I think the timing of the run was good, but uh, it wasn't really a power, it was just a, f it was a nice flick, it was a nice sort of touch to the, to the header. But the volleys are the ones you really fancy. Well, Greenough, was there I... an element of luck about it or not? No, Greenough, no, I thought it was great skills. As Malcolm said, he had his back to goal and he's chested it up in the air and turned near a complete circle and hit, hit an unstoppable shot. Um, well, that conversation, as you can imagine, went on for some time. And in the end, they came up with this order of merit. And I'm going to give it to you from the sixth best goal down to the goal that has won the competition. The sixth best, then, was goal E. And it was scored by Keith Robson for West Ham against Middlesbrough. To Lampard. Robson, all played on nicely by Robson for Brooking, who's got Gould away on the right. Using their wings well, West Ham. Bobby Gould with a shot, and Robson! The fifth best goal by Colin Powell, goal D, for Charlton against Crystal Palace. Jeffries. Now Powell. Oh, what a good shot! Oh, and what a goal by Colin Powell! The fourth best goal was goal C by Terry Yorath for Leeds United against Stoke City. Dark. Leeds having to go sideways and backwards to find a bit of space. But a lovely flick by Yorath. Very well done. Yorath still going. Bremner will take it over. Now Clark on to Yorath. It's there, Yorath. Three. Yorath started it inside his own half and Yorath finished it. Now the third best goal. Goal A scored by Tony Field for Sheffield United. And this came against Ipswich. Field. Tony Field going well, lighting two tackles and a third. Good running. A great goal. A masterpiece of a goal. Superb stuff by Tony Field. 
And the second best goal, goal F by John Mitchell of Fulham in that semi-final against Birmingham at Hillsborough. It knocked off the top of his head, but Lacey is there for Fulham. Played back again for Bobby Moore. Mullery. Curled in nicely there for Mitchell. Oh, and what a screaming goal! Mitchell! 1-0 to Fulham! And so we're left with the goal that wins the big match Golden Goal competition of 1975. And it's the one scored by Jimmy Greenoff for Stoke City against Birmingham City. Facing his own goal, looked in trouble. Styles out. Sounds. Steals, aiming for Robertson, gets it on for Greenoff. That looks useful. That's a good one! What a goal! Jimmy Greenoff! And I'm delighted to say that Jimmy Greenoff is in our studio with us today. But before we talk to Jimmy, let's just get a reminder again of that final order of merit. Here it is. Winner, Jimmy Greenoff. Second, John Mitchell of Fulham. Third, Tony Field of Sheffield United. Fourth, Terry Yorath of Leeds United. Fifth, Colin Powell of Charlton. And sixth, Keith Robson of West Ham. But what about the winning viewer? Well, we had over 25,000 entries again this season, and the first all-correct entry out of our enormous mailbag came from Mr. Thomas Truman from Bristol. And Mr. Truman, I'm glad to say, is with us here as well today. Let's come to you first of all, Mr. Truman. Yes. You must be, I think, the oldest Golden Goals winner that, I've, uh, that we've had on our programme, if I may say so. You are, what, over 70? I've been 75 in June, sir. And you come from Bristol, but you're a Welshman? Yes, sir. And you support Bristol Rovers? Yes, sir. And your memory goes back a long way in football. Very long way, sir. Tell me your happiest memory. What about football? Yeah. Well, I think the one I seen Cardiff City beat Leicester. With a goal, the last kick of the match, direct from a corner with Billy Davis. And your unhappiest memory in football? When I missed a, mem when I missed a cup final at Wembley with Sheffield with Cardiff and Arsenal. That was 1927. 1927. Why did you miss that? I got called up. I was on reserve at the army. What did you think of this fellow's goal? Marvellous. That's why he put it first. So you're a Jimmy Greenoff fan as well now? Yes, yeah, sir. Good. Jim, what about that goal of yours? Yeah, I think it's about the best goal I've ever scored in my life, Brian. Really as good as that? Yeah. Was there an element of luck about it? I mentioned it there to, to Alan Ball. I mean, he denied it. But, you know, you had your back to the goal for so long. How aware of you where the goal was? Well, I shot for goal and it went in. You know, I don't think there's any luck in that. I, I did attempt to score. Uh, I think if it, is, if it goes into the cop, people say, oh, what a bad miss, so I've got to take all the glory when it goes in. You've had a good season, and yet it, it finally has ended a little disappointingly for Stoke City, who looked as though they were going to be good champions for a long yes. time. What went wrong, do you think, in the end for you? Um, probably the injuries got on top of us when we needed experience at the end of the season. We just didn't have them, we had to play young lads. And even though they did very well, you, you can't do without experience. No. Of course, here in London, we've got the real nail-biter tomorrow night with Spurs and Leeds. You were at Leeds, what, for seven seasons? Yes. How do you think that one might go with Leeds? Bearing in mind, Leeds have got the European Cup and well, so on. Well, they just had a very good uh, result over in Barcelona. And I can't see uh, Tottenham being very relaxed on Monday night. No. And in fact, we've got some team news from Leeds where they say that uh, Duncan McKenzie and John Giles are definitely out tomorrow and that Eddie Gray, Joe Jordan and Norman Hunter are all doubtful. What do you think that would mean? Well, they've still got some very good youngsters. Uh, they seem to draft them in and they still don't uh, unbalance it in any way. Mm. I think they'll be very relaxed. I think Tottenham will have all on to beat them. Yeah, I think they might as well. But you're here because you've won our Golden Goals, Jimmy. And it gives me very, very great pleasure to hand that trophy over to you. Thanks very, very much, well done. Man. I hope we see a lot more goals like that from you next season yes. as well. Maybe you'd like just to finish it off by presenting Mr Truman yes. with his little trophy as well. And may I say, Mr Truman, what a pleasure it's been to have you with us this weekend. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Yeah, thank you very congratulations, much. Congratulations, Mr. Truman. Well, you certainly know your football. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to both of you. Thank, thank you. you. But, Jim, in fact, before you go, there's one more job for you to do, because on Wednesday at the Empire Pool, we've got the Evening Standard Five-A-Side competition for London clubs, which you can see, in fact, on ITV that night. And we've been asked if we'll make the draw now, so let's do that now. They'll give it a good shake, as they do traditionally. Right, if you can... Number eight, which is Millwall. Number Play number four, Crystal Palace. 
12 is Orient. Against number 5, Brentford. Number 3 is Fulham. I wonder if it's going to be West Ham. Unlucky. Number 9, no, it's Watford. Mm -hmm. Number 2 is West Ham. Against number 6, which is Tottenham. Number one is Charlton. And number seven, Arsenal. And the last two, number ten, Chelsea, will play number eleven, Queen's Park Rangers. Jim, thanks very much indeed. Thank you, that should be a good night of football there at Wembley on Wednesday night. The uh, London Evening Standard Five-A-Side Tournament, which of course, as I say, you can see on ITV. Let's just recap, though, on that draw. In the first round, we have Millwall against Crystal Palace, Orient against Brentford, Fulham against Watford, Tottenham against West Ham, and two second-round buys, Charlton against Arsenal, and Chelsea against Queen's Park Rangers. And that's it. Don't forget the cup final next week, as if you could. And if you haven't got a ticket, why not have some fun with us on ITV? Remembering, of course, that we start at 11 o'clock next Saturday morning. But we leave you today with the most joyous scenes in football yesterday. The moment when Derby County got their hands on the First Division Championship trophy. Well done, Derby County.